Welcome to your Essential Business Briefing. I'm Stephen Carroll. Coming up, new restrictions and new challenges for businesses in Paris as gyms stay closed and bars are shut down in an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19. We'll speak to some of those affected. As the French government prepares to announce more financial support for those hardest hit, we'll look at who's bearing the cost of this crisis. And the German town that's been instrumental in making music for hundreds of years. Now, businesses in Paris are again facing new rules which will limit their activities. That's after the French capital was classed as a maximum alert zone for coronavirus. Bars have been closed down and new restrictions put in place for restaurants, while gyms and other exercise studios will remain closed. I'm joined in studio now by two Parisian business people uh, who are dealing with these new restrictions. Elodie Garamond is the founder of Tigre Yoga Studio, which is in Paris and Lyon. Uh, You're also part of a campaign to try and help yoga studios uh, to reopen. Uh, And Jonathan Carr is with us as well from Demory Bar in Paris. Thank you very much for coming in, both of you. Elodie, I'm going to start with you. You've been closed now since September 28th. Yes. Um, Why have you been calling for yoga studios to be allowed to reopen? Because there is no contact in yoga, because we have had the measures, the more drastic and um, difficult to set in our studios. And the results are there. We have no cluster, zero case of COVID. And we are being punished um, based on absolutely no figures. So we claim to reopen because we help people feeling better and because we are not contamination uh, places. Do you believe there isn't public health evidence for the restrictions that have been placed on your business as opposed to other sports which involve contact? Yeah, well, I I support other sports as well because all the sports have been the latest to reopen in June and all the, 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 the sporting clubs have had to follow those rules, very strong and hard rules to be allowed to reopen. And the results are fantastic. On the 10 uh, uh, major spots of uh, cl- COVID clusters, there is none uh, sporting clubs, no yoga. So the, the, the statistics show that we should not be close. And we are the, the best students of the classroom and we are the first ejected. I'm, I'm, that? Yeah, I'm sure that the government would argue they don't have full data for all these things as well, but I understand the argument we're making. Uh, Jonathan, your bar had to close after these new restrictions. Tell us about how you reacted. We had to close Tuesday night. Um, we don't really understand why. Of course, we are all scared of that uh, virus and we need to, to be responsible. But I don't understand why a restaurant uh, can open and a bar who could, be, uh, uh, who could follow the protocol has to close. Is it more dangerous to drink than to eat? I don't think so. Did you consider, for example, st- serving food to be able to stay open or transforming your bar into a restaurant? We always serve food. It's 15% of our turnover, 85 is on uh, drinks. And from one day to another, even if we thought about it, it's not really feasible to switch that. So we don't want to be, to mess around and uh, follow the rules, but we need clarity on how we can survive because even restaurants with low capacity, uh, I don't know how they can survive for the next months. Uh, go, going back to the yoga studios, is there are there restrictions that you believe you know you could put in place that would be able to protect everyone, even if you have to reduce numbers, for example? Will that make your business worthwhile to reopen? No, because we have already reduced the number of people. We have uh, lowered the the number of people from forty percent, which is huge on the turnover. And we have had the, the very strong protocol. There is no more changing room. There is no more uh, mat or props that is being lent to, to the students. Uh, we have done the best we could do. And they, they're asking us now to do even better than better. But they're not showing us or explaining us what they're expecting from us. And since we had no case of COVID, what, what are we supposed to change? And they are pointing us as not being able to wear a mask during the, 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 the class, mm-hmm. the yoga class. So we said, well, let's try to wear a mask. And say, no, it's not good for health. You're not allowed to wear a mask. So that is it's completely absurd. 
uh, we have to close because we cannot wear a mask. And if we want to wear a mask, we are not allowed because it's not good for health. So you're looking for clearer guidelines that we could allow no you... We have no guidelines. We have nothing. And there has been no anticipation and no discussion before closing. Uh, no one has come to see the yoga studios and see what the protocol we had set in place and what we could do and what was already done and guiding us saying, well, maybe you should do more of this, less of that. And so we, you can remain open. It's been, it's been like you, it's been a closing so abrupt from a day to another with no anticipation and it's very violent and, and unfair. It's so unfair. Jonathan, is the, what, what does this mean for your business? How many staff do you have? What, what situation are they in now? So we are seven. Uh, hopefully the state will take care of their, uh, the payroll. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have uh, the rent, the accounting guy, the electricity, the insurance company. That's a certain amount of money that every month, since uh, we are closed in March, we had to pay. And we had a bit of help, uh, 1,500 euros per month. Um, but in September, because we opened, we did 57% of the turnover of last year. We have above 50, so no help. But we still have a huge payroll to pay and it's not profitable uh, business. Are you better off being closed? It depends what they're going to offer. They talk about 10,000 euros, but we have no idea of how, when, who. Yeah. LG, do you think your business can survive this? I'm not sure. I'm seriously worried about the treasury. And I'm, I'm like you, I've got uh, the, the payroll is not covering, I mean, the unemployment support they're giving us is not covering for all the extra charges that we have had to, to support since March. All the setup in the rooms, the, the, the lack of clients because we had to, to decrease the number of students, uh, the, 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 we had to lower the number of classes. I mean, all this has a cost. Are people scared? And to come back to you? Well, think? they're scared because the government is pointing us as being the, the place, the spot where they should be worried. Mm. And, and, and it's not fair because the marketing and the communication we have to do to tell people, come back, don't be afraid, you can come back, the protocol is very secured and there is absolutely no risk coming back to us. We, ha we did it in June, we have to do it again, but we have no more money mm. and they're not helping us. There is, we're, we're like the bars, we have no more sup financial support. Jonathan, what's your plan for the moment? What's the next step you're going to be able to take for your business? Uh, we have to wait two weeks minimum, see if we are allowed to open uh, in the few several weeks. We are ready to put this new protocol that apply to restaurants, but they have to do something for restaurants and bars because if you low, lower the occupancy, you change our business model, it doesn't work anymore. So in Three, three months, a year or two years, everybody will be bankruptcy and people cannot follow rules that push them to bankrupt. Okay, Jonathan Cron from Demery Bar in Paris. Thank you very much for coming in to speak to us and Elodie Garamont from Tigre Yoga. Thank you. Now, France's finance minister says there will be more financial help made available to businesses who've been forced to shut down. Bruno Le Maire says the government's solidarity fund will be beefed up to provide extra support to bars and restaurants. They can already get up to €10,000 in grants if their earnings have slumped significantly. Now, the French government has already laid out billions of euros to support businesses and households. Kate Moody's been looking at the details of this. Kate, who's paying for this crisis? Well, Stephen, the government is really shouldering the lion's share. Uh, we can break it down with some figures that were released by the French Treasury. Assuming the French economy takes an 11% hit this year, businesses are on the front line facing the biggest initial shock, uh, some three quarters of the total losses. That's represented in yellow on that first graph there. But once they They've received grants, payroll support, and other emergency aid. You can see their share shrinks to under a quarter. The government will be covering more than 60% of the damage, with households in green protected as much as possible. So how much will all of this cost and what will it mean for French public finances? Well, overall, France's pandemic response has already cost some 470 billion euros. Uh, the majority of that is in state-backed loans for struggling businesses, along with new direct spending. That sent the public debt level soaring from 98% of GDP last year to over 117% this year. 
That ratio is projected to remain high for the next five years or so as the state starts to scale back its emergency support. It has vowed not to increase taxes to fill up its coffers. France's top central banker has warned that while the current burst of spending is justified, down the road the government will need to regain control of its finances and live within its means. OK, Kate Moody, thank you very much for that. And next to the story of the German town that's made music its business for 300 years. Making instruments is the staple of the local economy and it's an industry that's been through thick and thin. Our correspondents Nick Spicer and Anne Maillet sent us this report. In this peaceful little town in the former East Germany, life follows a musical rhythm going back 300 years. In Mach Neukirchen, the entire local economy is built on making musical instruments. This family firm was founded in 1877 and has been making sitars non-stop through wars and 40 years of communism. But nothing quite like the COVID-19 crisis, a challenge for the founders' descendants. Bei der Wiedervereinigung war der große Vorteil, wir wussten im Prinzip, wenn wir uns jetzt Mühe geben, wird's besser. Ja? Aber jetzt ist es ja eigentlich, du kannst ja an nichts was festmachen. Riesige Sorge gemacht ist nicht der Fall. Ich meine, wir sind irgendwo trotzdem eine Nische, also jetzt Sorgen für uns so wirklich nicht. The town has 100 instrument workshops producing 350 different instruments, the only such place in the world. This multi-generational manufacturer just opened a new factory. Each year, it makes 20,000 conductor batons and half a million drumsticks. Ich denke, dass sogar an die nächste Generation schon. Man nimmt halt auch Zeiten in Kauf, die hart sind, bewusst, wo man sagt, man geht ein gewisses Risiko ein, um einen langfristigen Erfolg zu haben. After a 75% drop in sales at the start of the year, business is starting up again. The musical instrument business in the former East Germany is nowhere near its finale. That's it from us for now, but you can watch back all of our previous shows on our website, france24.com. And we're on social media if you want to get in touch with your comments. Until next time, thanks for watching. A programme about women who are reshaping our world. We meet those who seek equality, be it in the boardroom or at the village well. The 51% brings you stories from across the globe about the women who are challenging the way we think. The 51% presented by Annette Young on France24 and France24.com.